Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we're gonna talk about 25 different types of powdered foods. Yes, you heard me correctly, powdered foods. Why powdered foods? Well, they store for a long, long time and they pack the most amount of nutrients and calories into the smallest amount of volume. So let's get to it. Any food can be powdered if you dehydrate it and grind it into a fine powder or you can freeze dry it. Freeze drying is preferred because you get more moisture out of it, meaning that you can break it down to a finer and finer grain. So some of the stuff that I'm gonna show you today is stuff that I freeze dried and that I made into a powder myself. The great thing about powders is that you can use them in a variety of different ways. So if you wanted to make smoothies, if you wanted to make sauces, soups, you can even powder bacon. Bacon milkshake, anyone? I should also say that all of the foods that I'm gonna show you today are gonna to store longer if you store them in mylar bags with an oxygen absorber and a silica gel packet. The silica gel is going to basically take the moisture out, the oxygen absorber is gonna take the oxygen out. Those are the two things that are going to cause your food to spoil. Now remember that on most foods, the expiration date is not the date in which the food becomes not fit for consumption. In fact, expiration dates aren't even required by law. Companies usually just use them for stocking purposes. There usually is a best before date to ensure freshness, but most commodities can be used well past their expiration date. I have a whole video on that that you can go check out. Now, if you want to know whether or not your food has gone bad, there's a few things you can do. You can smell it. If it smells funky, chances are there's something growing in there that shouldn't be. And if we're talking about a, a grid down situation where healthcare is going to come at a premium, it might not be something you want to risk. Also, with some of these powders, if you notice uh, little blue speckles or green speckles, that could potentially be mold. Again, something you might want to avoid. Ideally, these would be in hermetically sealed containers. Right now, they're just in reclosable glass jars. But like I said, mylar bags are probably one of the best ways and then put those bags inside buckets. We're gonna show you a bit more about that in a future video because pest control is potentially going to be one of the most important things when we're talking about long, long-term food storage. So things you're not gonna see me talk about today are things like flour, sugar, salt, those are too obvious. We're gonna be talking about some more obscure types of powdered foods. So let's get right to it. Now, first up is egg powder. So this is egg powder I made with my Harvest Right freeze dry machine. If you wanna know more about that machine, check out the link in the description. I would strongly recommend it. It's a great appliance for you to invest in. It's gonna allow you to make any food, and I say any food lasts 25 to 30 years. These powdered eggs, make the one of the most wicked omelets or scrambled eggs that you've ever had in your life. And this is gonna last 25 to 30 years, okay? Eggs have one of the highest biological values of all foods, meaning that your body is going to be able to readily absorb most of the nutrients in this compared to other types of foods. So when you read a package and it says something like 14% of your daily protein intake, you're not always getting 14% because your body is only uptaking some of that. But with eggs, on the other hand, because it's such a superfood, it has your proteins, it has your carbs, even has a little bit of fats, that's going to basically provide you your complete macronutrient profile as well as a lot of helpful micronutrients. This can be very expensive if you're buying it from a freeze drying company, but if you make it yourself, it's in making things like this that's gonna help you pay off your freeze drying machine in a relatively short order. So would strongly recommend egg powder, probably one of the number one preps for preppers. Up next is peanut butter powder. Peanut butter powder will last about five to 10 years. It's basically just like peanut butter, only it's had all of the fats and oils pressed out of it, and then it's been ground to a fine powder, okay? So this will last between five to 10 years. Realistically, mylar bags, silica gel, and oxygen absorbers, it's gonna last longer than that, but to err on the side of caution. Uh, the great thing about peanut butter powder is that there are a lot of really good nutrients in here. 
That's something you wanna keep in mind with any of these powders if you're going to a place like the Bulk Barn or a bulk store. Make sure you look at the fat content of the powders. If it's over 10%, then chances are that's going to drastically diminish the shelf life of whatever you're trying to store. So you wanna get stuff, get stuff with a low fat content. Fat will go bad over time, it'll taste rancid, and it's just not gonna be good in the long run. So this is gonna be great to use in smoothies or baking, or of course you can make peanut butter and put peanut butter on whatever you'd put peanut butter on, which is pretty much everything. Up next is the nectar of the gods, and that is skim milk. Skim milk powder is one of the best things you can store because it's gonna store for a long, long time. It has all of the micronutrients that you need in order to survive. It has a lot of protein. You can do a lot of different things with this. You can mix this with a lot of different things. So powdered milk is definitely in the top 10 of my powder picks for preparedness. So make sure you store some. I would actually recommend that you just go and buy the powdered milk don't bother freeze drying it yourself or it's going to take a long, long time. Okay, just go and buy some of the powdered stuff in bulk, mylar bags, you're good to go. All right, so up next is hemp powder. Now, hemp powder is renowned for its health benefits. It also has a lot of protein in it, and that's why it's used in a lot of protein shakes. It has kind of a, a dry, kind of sandy taste to it. It's personally not my favorite in terms of taste, but I know in terms of nutrients, you can't go wrong with something like this. Now, the shelf life of this is rated to be around two years, but as with all of these things, it's probably gonna last a lot longer. Just make sure you get a hemp powder that has a low fat content. This one is under 10%, so you're gonna wanna keep it under 10%. Similar to hemp powder, veggie protein, is going to provide you with a lot of the essential amino acids that you need. It's gonna be a bit more expensive than your normal whey protein powder, but it's also going to last a little bit longer. And there's less that's gonna go bad in here. A lot of this has had the oils pressed out of it, just like the hemp. If you are somebody who's lactose intolerant, go with the hemp protein and the veggie protein. Up next is baking powder. Now, why baking powder instead of baking soda? Well, actually, I store both. But baking powder is good because it has uh, some leavening agents which are going to allow it, you to use it for cooking right from the hop. You don't have to add anything else. It does contain sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And when this expires for its uh, food-related purposes, it's still going to be good as sodium bicarbonate long afterwards. So this is gonna have an indefinite shelf life and uh, would strongly recommend storing a lot of this stuff. Would also be great for barter and trade post SHDF. I recently talked about this one. Cocoa is great to store. It's very rare in North America. There was a time when this stuff was used as money because of its rarity. So you definitely want to store cocoa for obvious reasons. Everybody likes chocolate. Now up next is cinnamon. Now like a variety of these powders that I show you today, Many have been shown to have positive health effects. So cinnamon is a great antioxidant. It does have some antifungal properties. So you can mix this with other powders or other things in order to help them preserve longer. It's going to ensure that uh, bad things can't grow in whatever it is you're trying to store. And once again, it is a more expensive commodity. So storing something like this would be great for trade and barter. Up next is whey protein. Now, whey protein is a byproduct of cheese production and, and it has a reported shelf life of two years, but I would venture to say that if properly stored in a dry and low oxygen environment, this is gonna store for a long, long time. The great thing about whey protein is that it has everything that milk has in it, plus some carbs and some filler, so you really are getting a meal replacement when you use whey protein. You just mix it with water, you don't have to mix it with milk, and it will make a delicious drink, which is gonna give you the power to do whatever you have to do after the grid goes down. 
Up next is Parmesan powder. Now this is not grated Parmesan cheese. Now something like this is likely only going to be good for a year or two if stored in this way. If you freeze it, it's gonna last a bit longer. I've never tried freeze drying it, but Parmesan cheese was something that once again was used as currency in the past. So it's something which is chock full of nutrients. There is a lot of sodium in it though, so that's something to be mindful of, but definitely doesn't hurt to have some Parmesan cheese on hand. On the topic of cheese, the next one is Kraft cheese powder. Now this is the stuff that you find in Kraft dinner. So this has so many chemicals in it that we know that it's gonna last a lot longer than any of us. So you can actually get real cheese powder and that's gonna be a lot more expensive. It's going to basically be a, a freeze dried type of cheese powder. And uh, it's gonna be probably a lot healthier than this, but this is a little bit cheaper it's a little bit more readily accessible. And if you do have kids, you know, you can put some of this on there. They might be more apt to eat it. Probably gonna have some of that bad stuff, you know, from the old world like MSG and things of that nature. But uh, if it gets, keeps the kids happy, then it's probably worth it. Up next is pancake mix. Now, like a lot of these things, you can mix and match these powders to do different things. So basically all this is, is a combination of flour, uh, baking powder, it's gonna have some salt and some sugar in there, but it's gonna be a ready-made thing. This is gonna last damn near forever, guys. This has salt in it, this has baking powder in it. The baking powder may lose its effectiveness over time, but in terms of the actual flour, because you also have a little bit of salt in there too, flour itself will store for 30 years if properly stored. I'm not worried at all about the shelf life of this. And again, if you have young people in your group, pancake mix is a great morale booster. Up next is Alfredo powder. Now, Alfredo powder contains modified cornstarch, powdered butter, dried milk, dried whey, corn, Parmesan Romano cheese, salt, and numerous other preservatives. So this, because it has all of those milk byproducts, is probably not gonna store as long as some of the other stuff here. But again, there's so many chemicals in here that I'm confident that this is probably gonna last for a decent amount of time. I am by no means a chef, but you can use this stuff to make uh, a lot of meals even tastier. So Alfredo powder, check it out. Up next is potato flakes. Now this is the one food that I kind of broke my rule on and it's the only one that's not a powder. And basically that's because this is a famine food, okay? This is gonna last between 20 to 30 years. This is primarily for the purpose of calories. This is just straight carbs. This is going to serve the same function as your flours and your rice and your other grains. So definitely would recommend potato flakes is going to lend itself to a variety of different recipes. And in this flake form, you get a lot of options with respect to what you can do with it. So would strongly recommend potato flakes. Up next is chickpea powder. Like most beans and legumes, if stored properly, it will last a long time. I especially like chickpea powder and I always have because of its very high protein content. It contains a lot of the essential amino acids and it's just a very dense form of energy and protein. So would strongly recommend chickpea powder and you can put this in a variety of dishes as well. Up next is another crowd pleaser and that's Jello. This is strictly for the kids. This is just a morale booster. It's something that's easy to make when times are bad. It's cheap and it's gonna last indefinitely. So make sure you get some of this. Up next are turmeric and curry powder. Now the only dif difference between these two things is that this contains a lot more other spices, uh, peppers, chili powder, stuff like that. So this is basically ready to go. Whereas this is gonna be used as the basis for other mixtures. These are things that you're gonna to wanna to mix into your soups. Uh, you can mix it with all your grains, rice, your noodles, stuff like that. Turmeric claims to have some health benefits, although the jury is still out on it. It has a ingredient in there called curcumin, which purportedly has a lot of health benefits and is scientifically proven. However, it's only 3% that. So it doesn't have a very high uh, amount of that in here. However, there are still some potential health benefits and it's very cost effective to buy this in bulk. So definitely worth looking at. Up next is chicken soup base or uh, beef bouillon, either or. 
Basically, this is just to flavor some of your foods, okay? This is gonna have a really high salt content, so you know it's gonna last down there forever. The only thing that's gonna get to this is moisture. So it could potentially start to clump up, it could get solid, and that's not what you want. So using a desk and packet, putting this in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers, it's gonna last a long, long time. And even then, I highly doubt this could ever go bad just because of that high, high sodium content. And there's probably gonna be lots of MSG in here too. All right, so up next is garlic salt. Now, ideally, I would have garlic powder. Garlic is just one of those things which is good to consume every day. They say there's a lot of health benefits. A lot of studies claim that it can extend your life a lot. Not saying that, but you know, definitely something you might wanna research. But garlic salt, I figure if you're gonna use salt, why not make it garlic salt? And maybe it'll even keep the bad spirits away after things go to hell. Up next is beef gravy. Now, if properly stored, it will store for up to two years. Everybody likes gravy. You can put this on your mashed potatoes. You can put it on practically anything, okay? Now, you can make gravy if you have meat, if you have access to meat, but it doesn't hurt to store some of this. Very cost-effective. And it's just gonna be another one of those things that's gonna bring more life to your staple food supply. Up next is cornmeal, okay? This can be used for the basis of a lot of different types of cakes and breads. It's gonna last over 10 years. Can't go wrong with cornmeal. Up next is cream of wheat. Now, cream of wheat is basically just flour, salt, and a few other things. It's gonna last as long as wheat lasts. So it's great though, because it makes for a good cereal in the morning. And you put some brown sugar on this or some of your other spices, cinnamon, stuff like that. It's gonna be a great meal for the kids. Up next is just a simple fruit juice mix, okay? The water that you have to drink after disaster may not be as clean and as good tasting as the stuff that you're used to coming out of the tap. This might just make it a little bit more palatable. Nothing special, basically food coloring and sugar in a jar. They call it fruit juice mix, works for me. Up next is cornstarch. Lots of uses both inside and outside the kitchen and a surprising amount of uses that aren't food related at all. Let me know what ideas you have for prepping pantry powders. That's a tongue twister. Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget if you want to get yourself a Harvest Right freeze dryer, check out the link in the description. It helps support the channel. I am an affiliate with Harvest Right. They're the only company that makes freeze dryers and we're going to be doing more videos on that because there's something about a machine that can make pretty much any food you throw at it last 25 to 30 years, which is pretty darn special. So go check that out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Don't forget the strong survive, the prepared thrive. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. So any food can be powdered if you dehydrate it and beat it into a fine powder. Why powdered foods? They pack why powdered foods? Why powdered foods? Why powdered foods? Well, they are very dense and they're dense like me this morning because I can't <laughs> do the Ron Burgundy thing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>